Hey Mercedes, where can I eat a burger? The seat weight sensor has detected that you are overweight and should stay away from burgers. As a matter of fact, I will stay parked here and you can walk home. You could use the exercise you fat bastard. What the? This is the all new fourth generation Mercedes A-Class, but it's just the first time we see it in North America. It is the most affordable way to put a three point star on your steering wheel, as prices start at just 36,000 Canadian dollars for the front wheel drive model and 38,000 dollars for the 4Matic all wheel drive model. The hatch is only available in a 250, which means that under the hood, it gets the all new M260 engine that is turbocharged, it's a 2.0 liter four cylinder with 221 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. The power plant is made into a seven speed dual clutch transmission. So performance wise, this thing is pretty brisk and eager to get going. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour is supposed to come in 6.2 seconds, although the best we could do was 7.2. The brakes feel pretty strong and they brought the car to complete stop in just 40 meters. The brake pedal, however, is not the most linear. It's a little bit mushy in the beginning and then it firms up. You'll get used to that, but you know, it, it's not perfect. Pulling power in general is really good and this little red rocket can get to very legal speed limits with uh, the slightest touch of the throttle. Fuel economy wise, it's not bad at all. We've been averaging 9.6 liters per 100 kilometers and you know what, that's mostly in the city, so that's pretty good. Not having a torque converter means that off the line, it takes a little bit for the dual clutch to engage and get you going. But you know what? After a while, you're gonna get used to that and you're never gonna notice it again. The 4Matic all-wheel drive system is front wheel biased and only sends power to the rear on demand when it needs to do so. Its operation is very seamless. And you know what? In countries like Canada where it snows a lot, it's great to have. There is though another very important reason to pick the 4Matic models and that's because the rear suspension layout changes. Mm -hmm. If you get the front wheel drive version, it has a torsion beam, cost effective suspension in the back. However, if you get a 4Matic, that becomes a very modern multi-link rear suspension. Now that's because the platform is shared with the mainstream Renault Megane in Europe. So get the 4Matic. North American models get the lowered comfort suspension as standard, which in Europe is known as the avant-garde. It has fixed rate damping and it's mostly quite comfortable. There are a few exceptions of bumps that just go straight through the chassis, like it really shakes up the car, but that's very rare. So 95% of the time you'll be absolutely fine. So if you live in a city like Toronto where potholes are the most common villain, uh, I would suggest not doing the 18 inch wheel upgrade and sticking to 17 inch because that's probably gonna help the ride comfort. The other ever so slight complaint I have about this A-Class because it's a Mercedes has to do with road noise. I mean, this specific car is riding on Michelin Primacy MXM4 tires. They're not very new, they're a pretty old tire, uh, but they're not the noisiest tire out there. They're pretty quiet. And this one on the highway gets some road noise coming from the back. That's a little bit of a complaint, but not a very big problem. Once you hit the back roads, the chassis responds well to the steering inputs. Cornering is fun and grip limits are high, but once you push hard, the car kind of overloads the front outer tire. It kind of leans on it too much, and it seems pretty unhappy doing that. If you keep pushing, understeer comes first, then lift off oversteer is very possible, but uh, if you overdo it, the ESP will kick in and you know will put a big stop to all that honing. However, the ESP, you can completely switch it off or put it in sport mode, but if you overdo it, it will kick in, so you can never really 100% kill it. If you are a true hoonigan and you drive like that always, then probably you should wait for the A35 AMG, because that one goes off, off. And it has drift mode, I think. You also get four driving modes through the dynamic select. You get eco, comfort, sport, and individual, I left it in comfort most of the time. It's nice to have individual to mix and match settings, but this car is really well suited for comfort. So there you have it. Time to introduce our sponsor for the day. 
Vinyl Mod is a company that will make your badges on your cars, and more actually, look so good. To see all the amazing products they make, go to VinylMod.com and use promo code MPSUMMER20 to get your own discount because we look after you. Now where were we? Roominess is great for a family of four. The front seats are really good. The driving position is just a tad higher than my ideal setting. Rear legroom and headroom is perfectly adequate and practicality is pretty high as the rear seats split fold in a 40-20-40 configuration. The trunk is also very accommodating at 370 liters and has a pretty wide opening to make loading and unloading really easy. For the price point though, I'd really appreciate a power tailgate just to be able to take advantage of a hands-free operation kind of thing. The interior and technology is definitely the highlight and what Mercedes is mostly proud of with this A-Class. They've included technology that's not even available on the flagship models like the S-Class. This thing comes with a new MBUX voice command system that has navigation with augmented reality. For example, I'm low on gas right now, so what you can do is this. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? We need gas. Please select an entry. Or you can use your natural voice and say, Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? What do you think of Audi? They're nice. I like seeing them through my rear view mirror. The exterior is good looking, especially in this Jupiter red. The rear looks very sexy, but the front is not as impressive. It's still very good though. If you want impressive, you need to look inside. The design is very modern and cool. You get the jet air vents from the E-Class Coupe and a plethora of materials that are mostly high grade. Just make sure you go for the upgraded 10 and a quarter inch screens because this is what the interior was designed for. The standard seven inch screens just look like cost cutting, so avoid that. Fit and finish is good. Everything feels very solid, but over those harsh bumps I mentioned earlier, you might hear some rattles and squeaks. Once the sun goes down, the interior lights become the party piece. You can pick between a huge variety of colors, but nothing looks better than purple. It is very fancy to say the least. The infotainment system graphics are powered by Nvidia, so the visuals are very sharp and there's no lag, and you can literally customize everything. The steering wheel controls work really well. From the left controller, you control everything you see in front of you on the instrument cluster, and you can customize all the dials. For the main infotainment screen, you have three ways to control it. First is obviously touching the screen. Second is using the right control on the steering wheel. And the third is actually using the touchpad. I mean, the touchpad is not exactly my favorite, but it does have some very useful features like the back, the skip track and next track and the home button. All that is really cool. So how much easier can they make it for you? The super cool augmented reality navigation uses the front camera to display the real view and then overlays arrows onto the video to make sure you're going to the right location. Now the problem with that is that this infotainment system supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and that's what pretty much all of us use now. So I use Waze, you probably use Google Maps. So the thing is this navigation is really cool but who will really use it? I'm not sure, so I'd rather save the money. In terms of building your own car, feel free to add the premium package and the Burmster sound system because it sounds really good. The technology package is great value too. And then maybe just add the heated steering wheel and 360 cameras as well. That configuration will keep the price of the car at 44,000 Canadian dollars, which is much better than the as tested price tag of 48 because that just gets a little bit too expensive. Overall, it is a really nice hatchback. It looks stunning inside and out, and it's a very pleasant drive. Most importantly, it's an affordable gateway into premium cars because this is genuinely a premium car. For a better driving experience, you might want to look at the Mini Clubman John Cooper Works or even a Golf R, but this is the new benchmark in terms of design, safety, and technology. Overall score from us is 8.7 out of 10. Hey Mercedes. How can I help you? What do you think of BMW? The same as you, otherwise you would not be sitting here. Perfect.